G'day. I have a rather special integral this time, and goodness me, don't students sometimes get caught up over it. Because we can see it's trigonometric, we can see that it's not a logarithmic structure because there's a 1 on the top and the derivative of cos squared x is certainly not 1, uh, so it doesn't follow a logarithmic pattern. How do we deal with it? Well, a lot of students have the initial reaction to do this. To bring this cos squared up the top. And at this stage, they get rather confused. They might like make a substitution, u equals cos x, but it leads to all sorts of problems. I'll just show you. If u equals cos x, cos x, du dx is the derivative of cos is minus sine x, so therefore du is minus sine x dx, and therefore we can integrate cos will be u, so cos x can be replaced with u, so we u to the minus 2, and we go to replace the dx, but we need a sine x as well and it simply doesn't exist and we can't make the substitution and students go round and round and round in circles because it's not this pattern so what on earth do we do with it? well we have to remember that trig functions are some of the most interesting functions of all that we deal with in school because there are so many ways they can be manipulated and consequently, as you get to slightly more advanced integrals, you find that trig functions dominate. Uh, they become extremely useful and extremely they're used in a great variety of ways. And I should rub this out as well, so it doesn't confuse us. This is not the way we're going. We sometimes have to go back to something very, very basic. Now, if you've struggled with this, I want you to think about the fact that this is the same as that. Aha, you might be thinking. Yes, 1 squared is 1 and cos x squared is cos squared x. Why did I do this? Well, we define another function as 1 over cos x, and that is this, sec x. So we've drawn something from our uh, mid-high school years. Some in, in New South Wales, Australia, we, we learn this rate, r ratio in year 9 or year 10, so it's mid-high school. But Simply knowing that and being able to convert 1 over cos squared x to sec squared x suddenly reveals all because hopefully you recognise this. Remember the, the three basic functions. If y equals sine x, the derivative is cos x. If y equals cos x, the derivative is minus sine x. And if y equals tan x, the derivative is sec squared x. You should practice these until you they just flow from your pen and you know them so well. Which means, of course, that going in reverse, the integral of cos x is sine x, the integral of minus sine x is cos x, and the integral of sec squared x is tan x. Look at that. The integral of sec squared x. Now, you don't need to put these two middle steps in. If you understand that 1 over cos x is 6 squared, you could have gone straight to that line and then straight to here. So it's in fact, the integration itself, the integral itself, is actually quite a simple one. But uh, I have seen many students caught up on it because they fail, they're thinking in terms of the normal integral patterns and fail to draw on a, I didn't write it up, but try and, fail to draw on the reciprocal functions, the reciprocal trig functions, that can sometimes resolve things. So I throw that in as an interesting little integral for you. 
Thank you very much for watching.